So I watched this really good atheist experience conversation, good conversation on the, well, actually, technically, I think it was The Line, um, the show from Mr. Atheist. It was Shannon and Matt Delahunty, and they were, had a, they had it, they titled it Evidence for a Soul or something like that, and the first caller was this guy, Jeff from Springfield. I think that's right. I'll double check, but I'll have the link in the description. Um, I just made this video spontaneously, so I didn't double check if that's his name, but I'm pretty sure that's his name. But anyway, Shannon, if she's listening, Shannon, if you're listening, she'll remember the conversation because it was, it was cool. It was one of the best conversations I've ever heard on the Atheist Experience. And it shows that the, the, the decision to have Shannon, a prominent member of this community, of the Atheist Experience show, is paying off. Why? Because if it was just Matt Dillon hunting conversation, he would have hung up on this guy five times. I swear to God, there's no, this conversation went on for almost a half an hour. And if it were just Matt, left to his own devices with no Shannon influence on him, the, the guy would have hung up on the guy four or five times, called him a jackass twice. You know, as it was, Shannon was like, no, you know, let's, don't hang up on him just yet, Matt. Let's discuss things with them and have a conversation with them. She is doing what she has reported, what she started out as her agenda. She's elevating the discourse as a matter of fact. So it's good to see. Now, this guy was kind of cool. And what was coming up was what we call the hard problem of consciousness. So there are a couple things that get brought up. Now, a little later on in a different video, or a different caller on the same video, Matt Dillahunty offered, interestingly enough, because I didn't know this, that he is not, in fact, a philosophical naturalist. He's not. So I didn't know that. Now, philosophical naturalism, a lot of atheists get this confused, is distinct from methodological naturalism. Methodological naturalism is what it sounds like. It's just a method of investigation that is normally used in the scientific process. Philosophical naturalism is a totally different animal entirely. And Matt Dillahunty offered that he is not, in fact, a philosophical naturalist. So the whole question of the hard problem of consciousness becomes moot, because there's no other reason I would ever bring it up to someone like Matt Dillahunty, except to challenge a strict naturalist, strict materialist position, because I think it offers a real challenge. Now, Shannon offered when she was talking to, she said, point blank, there is a hard problem of consciousness. So I would never bring it up with Shannon either, because there are some atheists who are what we call eliminative materialists, eliminative physicalists, and it doesn't seem like either Shannon and Matt are them. Matt actually said he's not a philosophical naturalist, so I'd never bring it up with him. There are other things I'd talk about with Matt if I were in a conversation with them, and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a, a, a hard problem of consciousness. Where, where Shannon is right, Shannon, Shannon has a pet peeve when it comes to these conversations. She focuses on people like J.P. Moreland. She's kind of right. I noticed the same thing a long time ago. Um, I think she had Eric Hernandez on his channel. I like those guys, and I like their arguments and their analogies. But they overshoot the mark. They, they basically say that there is, they use the hard problem of consciousness to prove a soul, which it doesn't do. And Shannon gets really miffed at that. And she always refers back to the neuroscience and the brain chemistry and says, like, you know, the, the, they're, they're, I think she said that J.P. Moran was misrepresenting the neuroscientists. He may have been. But what she, she almost does, but she doesn't do, but other atheists do routinely. So she needs to be aware of this if she continues on this path. She's, she's interested in philosophy of mind, which is good. Um, and she's the right person to get interested in this because what you cannot do in these conversations, because they are so complex and they are so nuanced that you can't have these type of gotcha, zero-sum, let's debate me, bro, type conversation when it comes to philosophy of mind. Why? Because you, you basically drag the, drag the whole conversation in imbecile land. That's what happened when T. Jump was debating Emerson Green. I mean, it was he was like, ah, I crushed you, and it was a little bit absurd to those of us who know better who were watching it. Like, oh, you did? Because <laughs> he didn't even get to explain where his panpsychist belief comes. He didn't even bring up point one about panpsychism. So you can't have these type of, you know, I got gotcha you conversations. You have to be Shannon-esque in order to have these conversations appropriately. So she's the right person to delve into this, but it's a very complex subject. Where she starts to err, she doesn't actually err, she just gives too much ammunition to the dumbos on the atheist side, is because she'll say, brain, 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 brain. We understand she'll start rattling off really complex neurological correlates between this behavior and that behavior in the brain, where we can locate in the brain, things like that. Now I get that that is really compelling evidence to a lot of atheists that brain and mind... If, see, she says that there's a hard problem of consciousness, so let's start there. 
Here's what the hard problem of consciousness really is. And a lot of atheists don't understand it at all, even a little. And they start rattling off stuff. Now, Shem does get it. She said there is a hard problem of consciousness. I'm not accusing this of Shannon at all. She understands it. But she sometimes gives too much ammunition to the dumbos on her side who will say, you know, what the hard problem of, let me start with what the hard problem of consciousness actually is. The, the best explanation I can give that is the clearest is there are, there is the material world. There are mechanical processes, things like mass, momentum, charge, and these make up the sum total of the physical world. If you are a physical naturalist, you think that this is a closed end system. There is no such thing as the supernatural, but there is also no such thing as the immaterial. So in order to reconcile the hard problem of consciousness, you kind of have to hand wave it away and pretend like it isn't really a thing. So you have, con you have the material world, and then you have what it is like to be something. You have brain processes, mechanical brain processes and functions, and then you have what it is like to be something. And they are ontologically distinct from each other. They are entire separate categories. That's the true hard problem of consciousness. They are in principle irreconcilable one to the other, that you cannot have what it is like, you cannot account for what it is like to be something given the reality of the material world. Now, how it gets answered by the strict physicalist materialists is they say brain is so complex, brain is so complex, we understand so much, it's basically naturalism by faith. They might be right. I'm not necessarily... Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm, I, I don't even know what, what my position is on these. I, I don't know what my position is. I don't really need to take any type of, I'm sort of agnostic on it. I just follow the arguments. I don't really, I guess I'm a dualist, sort of. But there are problems with dualism. Now, but the, the problems that atheists say are the problems with dualism aren't actual problems. What they usually say, and Shannon doesn't say this, but she gives enough ammunition to the dumbbells on her squad that she should be careful of how she phrases this. Because even in this thing, even in this particular conversation, she started going, you know, if you mess with someone's frontal cortex, you eliminate, you, they, they, they act like substance dualism means there's a hard, fast wall between the, the two dualities. And that there's nothing you can do to, there should be in principle nothing you can do to affect the brain, to affect the soul. And it doesn't work like that. You, you can, in other words, she's saying, you, 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 we know that if you, I mess with your frontal cortex, I can change your entire personality. If I damage your brain, I can damage what would be your soul. And what most substance dualists are, or most dualists are dualist interactivists. We recognize that there's a strong correlation between your brain processes and whatever it is that would be your soul, just as we recognize there's a strong correlation between your brain processes and what is your personality. Now, in the case of personality, even an atheist can recognize that there's a there there. Correct? Correct. There's something uniquely Shannon-esque about someone like Shannon. That is why you want her around when you're having a conversation about philosophy of mind, when, when you deal with Matt Dillon. Why? Because she's got qualities that are unique to Shannon. As a physical being, as a physical entity, she's somewhat indistinguishable from other women, of other, other women, correct? Materially speaking. But there is something uniquely Shannon-esque about her that seems to transcend the sum total of her material being. Everybody recognizes that's true, correct? Shannon is different from other people. She's uniquely Shannon-esque. That's why you want to have these conversations with her. If we damage her frontal cortex, that Shannon S thing disappears. She can become a vicious, like, rah, babbling fool. We can, we can turn her into a vicious, babbling fool by messing with her brain. Does that mean there was no personality there to begin with? No. That's the logic of we damage your brain, we damage your soul on this earth, therefore no soul. It's the same logic. It's imbecile logic. It's imbecile logic, and or, or so many atheists bring it. It's so dumb. In that, and Shannon doesn't. I'm not saying Shannon does it. I'm saying she gives them. She gives too much. She gives them too much ammunition to make those. The, I, I get why it's compelling to naturalists because the 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 frontiers of exploration on the brain. We're starting to understand so much about it. So they think it's going to solve the hard problem of consciousness. I don't necessarily think they're right, but it doesn't matter. There are such things as Christian physicalists. There are. They have a hard time too, but they exist. And they think the soul is correlated almost completely in the body. So it doesn't matter if you damage the brain, you damage the soul. There is no hard, fast rule about soul. 
that atheists are privy to just because it supports their side of the argument. If I it can't be a soul, Craig, why? Because if I damage your brain, I've, I've changed your personality and I've changed your soul. Okay, that doesn't matter. There's no hard, fast rule about the soul that it's unrelated to the physical components of your brain. We, again, most of us who are clear thinkers, if we're dualists at all, we are dualist interactions. We get that the brain, that the soul, whatever it may be, I don't, I don't even, you know, soul is their word. I don't like talking about this about soul. I never bring this up with Shannon to talk about soul at all. Why? Because you can't prove the soul. What's her complaint about J.P. Moreland is my complaint about J.P. Moreland. She's correct in that. He, he uses the information and the arguments to prove more than he can actually prove and by, you know, kind of harms us in the process. Not necessarily harms us, but because it's easy for the atheist to debunk what he's saying. It doesn't prove a soul. Ditto for Eric Hernandez. I like Eric, I liked all their arguments. I listened to them a lot. And I like them both. But, but they're, they're, they're reading too much information, trying to prove too much. So I would never call up and say I can prove a soul to Shannon, ever. It's not what my argument with Shannon would be, and I wouldn't bother with the hard problem of consciousness to bring it up with Matt Dillahunty. Why? Because he already said I'm a philosophical natural. I'm not a philosophical naturalist. Okay, fair enough. So I'd try something else on him. I'd try Kalam. <laughs> Kalam. Well, <laughs> I did it with Kalam, just like that. Well, uh, what do you mean, Kalam? Kalam, just like I said, Matt. No, I don't know what I, I don't know what I, what, what, what thing I, what stunt I'd pull on Matt Dillahunty. But it wouldn't be hard problem of consciousness. The only thing I think it supports is a challenge to the strict naturalist, strict materialist. And I think if you don't see that, you don't really understand the hard problem of consciousness. Again, the hard problem of consciousness is that these are ontologically distinct categories. The material world and what it is like to be something and that they are in principle irreconcilable. One cannot be reduced to the other. Now, that may not be true. So I'm not even as much of a dogmatic hard problem of consciousness guy as someone like David Chalmers. I'm not. I, I, I just get what the hard problem of consciousness is and I look to the different explanations. You know, and I'm, I'm not sure that I'm, any of them are irreconcilable to Christianity. Panpsychism, for example, you know, or strict physicalism. I'm not entirely certain that, that they're not, that they can't be accounted for with Christianity. So I don't really care all that much. The only reason I bring it up is to challenge the strict materialist. Now, Shannon isn't a strict materialist, or it doesn't seem like she is. Maybe she is, but if she is, it's a nuanced version of it that I could probably be okay with. The only thing that she does wrong, she doesn't really do wrong, she just gives too much ammunition to the dumbos in the atheist community who say stupid things. You know, they, they, they have these sort of non-answers to the hard problem of consciousness that, that are basically meaningless. It's emergent property of the brain. Okay, fine, maybe, but that doesn't solve it. <laughs> it's the point of the hard problem of human consciousness, there's something about your consciousness that I always bring up. This is me. This isn't one of them. The, the ontologically distinct categories, I borrow that explanation from somebody else. But my, my thing is that there's something about your conf consciousness that seems by definition miraculous that seems literally almost impossible to account for. Now, that doesn't mean it is miraculous. It just seems to be, by definition, miraculous. And when, eight, when strict materialists, strict physicalists try to hand wave this away, they try to hand wave it away based on naturalism by faith. One day we will discover an enzyme. You know, Patricia Churchland, as I talked about in her, her chat with Darren Roth, I thought she was actually going to offer a challenge to the dualist position or a challenge to, to someone like me, and she didn't at all. She, didn't, she, she hand waved away David Chalmers. Oh, he's an idiot. <laughs> Basically, that's what she said. He doesn't understand the brain at all. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But she didn't tell me why he didn't know what he's talking about. She didn't give any argument against anything he said. He's certainly not an idiot. Um, you know, I listen to these conversations all the time, just kind of like Shannon, because they're fun. They're really interesting. There's one I just started listening to called The Weirdness of Consciousness, which is Robert Wright, David Chalmers, and what's her face? Um... I forget her name, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Goldstein, I think, or something like that. I forget. That's a really good conversation. But um, the, the, what Shannon complains about, I'm totally on board with. You can't use these debates. You can't use this in the same sort of, ah, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha, you, atheist, I got gotcha, you, theist type debates, because it's too complex. It's too complex, and you're in speculation territory no matter what. Even as a neuroscientist and a materialist, you're in speculative land. So you have to yield to the unknown. 
and say there's a lot that we don't know and can't account for, and we are making philosophical inferences, but we are making them based on limited information. Now, the, the, the naturalist by faith may wind up being right. You know, they wind, might wind up finding, that's what Patricia Churchland offered, that we might wind up finding, you know, a chemical or an equation that's going to reconcile us and show this is all brain. It's been brain the whole time. I don't think so. But even then, you know, you, you, haven't, you can't defeat a soul by understanding the brain better and better and better so that you've eliminated whatever a soul may be. Why? Because ultimately what you would be calling a soul would be entirely speculative about how it interacts with, with, with a human being. There is definitely something every atheist recognizes and understands that there is something about a person that transcends the sum total of their material being, right? Everybody gets that. That's not complicated to understand. If you damage a brain, you damage that. So it, it, it existed. Whether, whether, you, whether you, you, can da you can damage a brain, get rid of it, it existed. Shannon is uniquely Shannon-esque. There's something about her that transcends the sum total of her material being. If we start messing with her brain and we damage that, we can change her completely. doesn't mean it isn't there right now. Matter of fact, it kind of proves that it's there right now. There's a there there. Same idea with consciousness. There is a there there. There is what it is like to be something. The weakest arguments from the, from the materialist end are trying to account for it in strict naturalist terms. They're trying to be consistent with naturalism. So they argue basically that it isn't there. There is no, there's, it is a, a, effectively an illusion. There is no there there. There is no what it is like to be something. It's some sort of illusory, illusion to you. Now it's a really compl complex way of accounting for this, but I think that's possibly the weakest position out there. Um, again, but that doesn't mean it can be completely hand, wave, hand waved away either. Because, you know, once, once you start dealing with these super smart people, they have, way, they have ways of reconciling this stuff and really nuanced approaches that it's really hard to hand wave away anything. You go like, well, wait, because you can start to see they're, most of them are reasonable human beings, so they start to, like, you know, calculate that and how they formulate their ideas about reality. So the reasonableness enters in somehow. And it's hard to hand wave all of it. I think the most likely thing is the dualist, interactionist, dualist type position. There's no way Shannon would ever accept dualism because that, you know, basically means that there is a soul or is an immaterial something about a human being. Um, she does recognize to some degree that there is, at least in principle, because nothing is controversial about my, you know, someone's personality transcends the sum total of their, nothing controversial about that at all. So some people will recognize that that's in, e, even that is to some degree an immaterial thing. It is an intangible. It is, at the very least, mysterious. And it does seem even that to be, to some degree, by definition, miraculous. And that's a known. Everybody understands that there's uniqueness to human beings, to individual human beings. How? 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 We aren't automata. We aren't. Materialism would suggest that we would be to some degree. That's what materialists are always trying to do. You know, the people who are really ginned up over materialism, philosophical materialists, are trying to suggest to some degree that we are automata. And we know by our own experience that we're not. So there you have it, kids. Uh, just some food for thought. The, the only thing, the only takeaway of this conversation that Shannon is a good influence on the atheist community. She's a good influence on the atheist experience. She's why Matt Dillahunty brought her on board. She, saw, she, she, she elevates the discourse. Like I said, if it were just Matt left to his own devices, that conversation wouldn't have, wouldn't have gotten good at all. He would have hung up on the guy five times. And, you know, as it was, it was really, really interesting, cool conversation. So I strongly suggest you check it out. Um... And we will take it from there. That is all, kids. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.